few months ago, my friend from Japan sent me the tune from the beginning of the video, and it had some pretty interesting stuff. He then went on to tell me the chord at the beginning of the chorus was called a black adder chord, and was very well known in Japan. I've never heard of this, and asked for info, so he sent me this Nico video link. And yeah, I can't read any of this. So I Google translated the entire page and was able to get the gist of the chord and how it's been applied within tunes. Strangely enough, in my research for this video, the only tunes I could find that used this chord were Japanese, with exactly one exception in K-pop, which we'll talk about later. But let's back up a little bit. What exactly is a black adder chord, and where does the name even come from? Josh from Ongaku Concept did a cool video about this chord a few years back, and he covered some tunes I'm not going to talk about, so definitely go check out his video after this. But in his video, he talks about how he heard this chord in Guilty Ice Fever from Love Live's Guilty Kiss group. He asked people in his Discord to give it a name, and someone suggested Black Adder. The reason? It sounds cool, and that checks out in my book. Japanese composer Hidekazu Tanaka, who we'll also take a look at in a second, calls it the Bunsu Augmented, or Fractional Augmented Chord, referring to the chord's common notation as a hybrid slash chord. Colloquially, among Japanese YouTube commenters, I've also seen the name Ikisuki Chord floating around, which, from what I understand, literally translates to going to extremes, but is used here in slang, which I can't translate without being demonetized. But names aside, let's take a look at the chord. The black adder chord is deceptively simple. Take a root and build an augmented triad, a tritone over it. Say our root is E flat. Our chord would then be analyzed as the hybrid chord A augmented over E flat, which is technically an E flat seven with a nine, sharp 11, and no third. The absence of the third is important because that's what gives the black adder its unique hybridized augmented over wonky root sound. Whereas if it had the third, it would really just be a dominant seven with a nine and a sharp 11. Instead of one big chord with a bunch of tensions, we instead hear the upper structure and root of a black adder as two separate entities. Also keep in mind, since augmented triads are symmetrical, the upper structure can be in any of three inversions. So let's talk about function. Before we look at the tunes, the short answer is that this chord functions primarily as a hybridized substitute dominant, almost always resolving down by minor second instead of by fifth. But since I like to be contrarian, many of the tunes we'll look at today defy this convention. But for the most part, that's how this chord has been used. Keep in mind, any chord can go to any chord. And like anything, this chord's function relies entirely on context. Let's now take a look at our first example, the one from the beginning of this video. This tune is the opening of the ping pong anime Shakunetsu no Takyu Musume, written by Hidekazu Tanaka. People have noticed he likes using this chord a lot in his tunes, and he's publicly talked about how hip it is. So let's take a listen. I've highlighted the black adder in funky orange. catches you off guard, right? Leading up to the chorus, we have a descending line cliche going into the 5-7 of 6, but instead of the expected 6 minor, the first chord of the chorus is a black adder, acting as a sub-5 of 6. It then resolves down to the 6 minor, displacing the resolution by one bar. A very similar chord progression with similar black adder functionality can be found in the tune Shining Star by the K-pop group Lovelies. Let's take a listen. <laughs> Just like the Shakunetsu switch opening, this black adder acts as a jarring sub 5 of 6 on the downbeat of the chorus again displacing the 6 minor by one bar. These are the only tunes I've heard that use the black adder in this way. Maybe the producer, Tak, is an anime fan and wanted to pay homage. Or maybe it's just a coincidence. Either way, super hip. Now as much as we all enjoy cartoons for children, let's move on to a more mature medium, video games. The black adder chord is ubiquitous in anime and has a lot of examples, many of which are featured in the Nico video article and Ongaku Concepts video, but I've never heard anyone talk about its appearance in video games. After researching for a bit, I found a few examples. The first of which is in the Temple of Time theme from the first-person shooter Breath of the Wild. 
let's take a look at the tail end of it. In this instance, I would argue the black adder functions in a so-called non-functional way. In the previous examples, their black adders resolved like subvibes, while this one just acts like a color. Whereas we would normally expect the 1 or D minor, the final chord is the strikingly non-diatonic F-sharp augmented over C, which just hangs until it loops back to the beginning. Speaking of mature Nintendo games, let's now look at the final example, and my personal favorite, the B section of the orchestral arrangement of K.K. Bossa from the Animal Crossing movie. Words can't express how pillowy the black adder in this tune hits you, so I'll just stop talking and put the transcription on. Let's listen. Alright, so let's see what's going on here. The first phrase of the B section has the classic walk down by fifth, starting on the sharp 4 minor 7 flat 5 and ending on the 1. The melody over this is a tasteful diatonic sequence that steps down, giving us a cheeky chromatic step up at the end, highlighting the sharp 11. The next phrase starts the same, but then deceptively substitutes the black adder instead of the expected 3 minor 7. These two measures punch you in the gut in a few ways. By substituting the C black adder for a B minor 7, we now expect to resolve down to the B minor 7, but we instead resolve down by 5th to the D minor 7 over F before we hit the B minor 7, which then acts as a related subdominant to the E7. We've doubled the harmonic rhythm to interpolate these two chords before the expected B minor 7 and E7. This increase in harmonic movement catches us off guard without sacrificing that buttery, bossa-like chord progression. Before I sign off, I want to hit you with one final example. My good friend Alvin Yang is doing a cover of the second Kaguya-sama Love is War opening, and used a super groovy black ad near the end. Here's an exclusive work in progress sneak peek of this cover. <laughs> Pretty cool. Go sub to him. <laughs>